So the PlayStation Portal was officially announced a few days ago, and surprise, surprise, it's already looking like a waste of space. It's reportedly shipping out with an 8-inch LCD screen equipped with two halves of the DualSense controller on either side like some kind of backwards Nintendo Switch. I'll give it one thing. If this was its own dedicated portable gaming device, I wouldn't mind the look. But it's not. It's a dedicated streaming tablet, and if you've been following this channel enough, you know I hate this trend of cloud gaming. I feel like it has its place as an accessory, but I also know that many of these companies are pushing towards cloud gaming and streaming future so they can peddle their game passes and online services. Gone are the days of physical gaming, and streaming has become the new normal. And this is why I emphasize this use as an accessory. I use the Game Pass as much as the next guy and other online game services because it's useful to try out new games and there's some titles I'm only ever going to play once. But 10 or 20 years down the line when these services eventually become replaced by the next generation, I don't want to immediately lose access to my entire library of games. Physical media is still necessary. So I'm naturally very outspoken when it comes to entire production lines being created to create these devices that are more or less glorified Android tablets. I mean, with Sony, I can literally buy a backbone controller or some other kind of controller, slap it onto my phone, and get the same effect by streaming from my console. So why would I pay $200 for something that does the exact same thing? Oh great, I can answer text while gaming on my overpriced Kindle. Or even with the Logitech G Cloud, which is $100 more. What happens when I want to leave the house? It's useless. And I know the argument is, well, there's Wi-Fi networks everywhere. Not reliable ones. It takes me 10 minutes to upload my own photos from my phone to my Google Drive in my house. And it's not like these things are that far off from dedicated gaming devices. If you're paying $200 for the portal, why not get a Switch Lite for the exact same price? Or better yet, you can just pay a little more and you can get a Switch OLED or Steam Deck. Like, come on, you couldn't even include an OLED on your gaming Kindle? Not to mention, you can get other dedicated devices for retro gaming like the Ambernec RG35 or Pal Kitty for less. But I understand the demand. You want to play some of your games on the couch, maybe someone is using the TV, or you want to play in another room. Well, you can easily make your own streaming handheld using a homebrew PlayStation Vita, and it works very well, might I add. So here's how, right after our sponsor. They're after me, and if you don't go to patreon.com slash bullion right now, they're gonna find me, okay? There's a bunch of cool stuff over there, like videos early and like voting in polls. I, I don't know, you gotta go, you gotta go to patreon.com slash bullion right now. <laughs> First, you're gonna want a homebrew Vita. I won't show you how here, but it's a very easy process. I'll link some guides in the description. You are also going to want to make sure you have the NVIDIA GeForce Experience downloaded onto the PC you plan on streaming from. Now, before we go any further, this app is known to have various issues, which can be solved through troubleshooting. So if at any point you experience an issue, check the link in the description for the included extensive troubleshooting guide. Start your GeForce Experience and click on the settings, then Shield. Make sure game stream is on. Then install moonlight.vpk from the GitHub and place it into the VPK folder with the rest of your app files. From your Vita, you can simply go to Vita Shell, locate your VPK folder, and install Moonlight directly to your home screen. Start the app. Then you should see search devices. Click on this. You can add devices manually, but you should be able to see your computer just by searching. Once you select it, you should see a pen displayed at the bottom of your screen on your PC. Enter this and accept all the pairing dialogue. You can stream games directly or stream your desktop and boot games from there. This leads to cool things like calibrating controls for PC emulators and playing games you wouldn't otherwise be able to, even on a PlayStation portal. And the best part, it's on the Vita's OEM OLED screen. So it looks and runs fantastic. I set up Moonlight on my Vita to start my ultimate homebrew Vita short series, emulating requests onto the Vita seamlessly. However, I found that it worked so well, as opposed to the 2DS and 3DS alternatives, I legitimately used it to play some PC games around my house. And that had me thinking about the PlayStation Portal. I thought you could use this valuable information and save yourself some money coming 2024. And if you don't have a Vita, get one. The Vita is more powerful than ever in 2023, and the homebrew scene is catching up to the likes of the 3DS. With that being said, thanks for watching, and if you want to see more homebrew videos, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video.